what Daftari sir explained. So it is case based and on pet we can just add one more thing that is delayed pet that might help some time. That is just you acquire the image after say one hour, no injections in between. And if the uptake goes on increasing, that retention factor that suggests towards the neoblastic process. So that might help. Thank you very much. So let's move on to the next talk, uh, which is by Dr. Sandeep Vaidya, who is a well-known uh, pediatric orthopedic surgeon, and he's going to tell us how not to miss epifacial injuries in children. Okay, thanks, Ritesh. So, uh, facial injuries we know are fairly common injuries in children, comprise about 15 to 30 percent of all pediatric fractures. However, a fair percentage of these are misinterpreted on the radiological investigations. So let's look at the reasons why uh, there are errors in interpretation of x-rays in facial injuries. Uh, the first reason is, can be as simple as failure to obtain optimal radiographic views. For example, consider this x-ray, a three-year-old child, history of fall from a height, followed by refusal to bear weight on the right lower limb, and the AP x-rays looks okay. But if you look at the lateral x-ray, it is clear that this is a femur neck fracture, del bay type 1, which deserves a close reduction and internal fixation. So that's the basic rule which all of us uh, learn right when we enter orthopedics, that is to obtain two orthogonal views to diagnose any condition. However, sometimes just AP and lateral views don't help. So consider this case of four-year-old girl with fracture of the lateral condyle of the humerus. This looks like an undisplaced fracture which can very well be treated conservatively. However, we know that in lateral condyle fractures, displacement is best assessed on internal oblique views and therefore we, when we do an internal oblique x-ray, we realize that the displacement is more than acceptable and therefore again this fracture requires a fixation. Sometimes we fail to account for coexisting deformity. So again, an elbow trauma and uh, following the elbow trauma, the child is very often unable to extend the elbow and we, if we do an x-ray on a flexed elbow, what happens is that the capitulum, it overlaps the distal humeral metaphysis and this can be misinterpreted as a fracture of the lateral condyle. So the solution for that is to obtain two separate radiographic views to visualize the distal humerus and proximal uh, forearm and then the bony anatomy becomes much more clear. So that brings us to rule number one, that is always make efforts to obtain op optimal radiographic views and obtain special views in select situations. Coming to the second uh, uh, pitfall, uh, which leads to misinterpretation, is that pediatric epiphysis have a significant cartilaginous component, and many times the fracture line, it passes through the cartilage. So consider this example, a neonate born after a difficult labor with elbow swelling and difficult uh, and decreased movements of the elbow and the obvious diagnosis over here is a dislocation of the elbow. However, dislocation of the elbow is not reported in literature. So if we consider that the distal humeral physis is completely cartilaginous, this becomes not an elbow dislocation but a distal humerus facial fracture. Another similar case, this time the knee joint, there is knee swelling and a restriction of movements of the knee in a neonate, but the x-ray looks okay. But if you look carefully, there is a bony flake anteriorly and this actually is the entire distal humeral uh, epiphysis. So this is a distal humeral facial fracture. And as seen on subsequent x-rays, these heals, consolidates and finally remodels. So this brings us to rule number two, that is when you are assessing plain x-rays in a child, see the bones which are obviously visible on the x-rays, but also imagine the cartilage which is not being seen. The third pitfall is inability to appreciate normal variants. And pediatric skeleton is replete with accessory ossicles and secondary ossification centers, which are very often misinterpreted as fractures. How do you differentiate them? So well, the uh, normal variants, they have smooth borders as against the sharp, jagged borders of a fracture. And in such cases, obtaining comparison x-rays of the opposite side help because very often the normal variants are bilateral. One common area of misdiagnosis is base of the fifth metatarsal where the secondary ossification center is misdiagnosed as a fracture. How do you differentiate? So the secondary ossification center is along the long axis of the fifth metatarsal, whereas the fracture line is always transverse. Another normal variant example, bipartite patella, which 
is uh, uh, occurs along the superior lateral border of the uh, aspect of the patella. This is a very rare uh, location for a fracture. Secondly, look at the smooth borders. So that, this differentiates a bipartite patella from a fracture. Also in the distal tibial physis, the, uh, an irregularity which is known as the bony hump, which is near the medial border, can it is also called the Poland's hump or the Kemp's hump. It is often misdiagnosed as a fracture. The ossification centers of the olecranon, radial head, and trochlea, they often ossify by multiple small uh, ossific nuclei, which then collates to give rise to a single ossification center. And failure to re realize this can give rise to a mistaken diagnosis of fracture. So this brings us to rule number three, that whenever you diagnose a facial fracture, always rule out a normal variant. Consider that the injury under question might be a normal variant and not actually a fracture. The last pitfall that I'm going to discuss is failure to acquire advanced imaging in special situations. So for example, consider this x-ray, four years, years old boy, fall on outstretched hand and trauma to the elbow joint. The x-ray looks perfectly normal. However, the pain and swelling is out of proportion to uh, the radiological findings and therefore advanced imaging is obtained which shows that actually this is a completely displaced radial, head, radial neck fracture which is not visualized on plain x-rays because the radial head is completely unossified. Therefore, such situations where the fracture may be through the cartilage is an indication for advanced imaging like an MRI. Another example, again a four-year-old boy fall on outstretched hand and you can see an ossification flake within the elbow joint in the ulnohumeral joint. This can be thought of as the ossification center of the trochlea. But wait, this is a four-year-old boy. And if you look at the ossification sequence of the elbow, you realize that the trochlea ossifies only around the age of eight to nine years. So obviously in a four-year-old child, this cannot be the trochlea. And when you do an advanced imaging, you realize that this is an entire medial condyle fragment which then requires open reduction and internal fixation. So an elbow is an especially notorious area for a misdiagnosis of uh, uh, fractures and an entire list of injuries uh, around the elbow are grouped under a term terminology called the elbow trash lesions, trash being the acronym for the radiographic appearance seemed harmless. These injuries cannot be diagnosed on x-rays because they pass through the cartilage and advanced imaging is required to diagnose them. We have described one form of trash lesion that is a chondral shear fracture of the capitulum which is impossible to diagnose on x-rays because the fracture fragment is completely cartilaginous. So rule number four, order advanced imaging where needed. So to conclude, again I am uh, enumerating what I discussed. Obtain appropriate radiographic views, consider injury through unossified cartilage, be aware of normal variants, and obtain advanced imaging when indicated. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sandeep, for, for an excellent talk. Uh, we'll take questions if there are any. Dr. Gandhi. Uh, Sandeep, very good talk. Thank you, sir. The one thing which uh, you did not mention about the CT scan. Yeah. Uh, so a CT scan has a limited utility in uh, pediatric fractures. Why I am saying that is because the pediatric skeleton is largely cartilaginous. And uh, therefore, uh, what happens is that if you want to assess the status of the cartilage as well, an investigation like an MRI, USG, or even an intraoperative arthrogram gives more information than a CT scan. However, in certain scenarios, CT scan is useful. A prime example of this being an injury around the ankle in adolescent, what we call as the you know uh, transi transitional fractures like the triplane fractures or the telo fractures, where doing a CT scan helps us enormously in assessing the anatomy of the fracture and to plan over fixation. So apart from the adolescent age group, where by that time the skeleton has largely ossified, CT scan, I feel, has a limited utility and an MRI, USG or arthrogram are better modalities because they outline the cartilaginous parts of the skeleton as well. Thank you. Okay. What about the opposite uh, side view? Yeah, absolutely. They are important in certain situations. Due to paucity of time, I could not discuss everything. But especially in things like, you know, differentiating from normal variants, obtaining an opposite side, of, uh, side view is uh, quite uh, valuable. Thank you. Yeah, they thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Dr. Just quickly, um, 
I mean, I think this is fantastic. I think there's a huge, uh, you know, even though there's tons of information available online about looking at pediatric fractures and things like that, it's very difficult for people to look for it. I think a great opportunity for Vira, uh, you know, for, for BOS as a whole is to create some little basic uh, educational modules maybe that we can put on the Vyrox site that just talk about just common pediatric injuries around the elbow and how not to miss them or something like that. I think that that would be really, really valuable for yeah. everyone. So that's something they can go to and in a minute they can see what are the common four signs, you know. So I think that uh, would be great to have that. Yeah. This talk itself is pretty good to go yeah. on the Vyrox website. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Sandeep. Uh, so let me invite uh, the next speaker who is uh, again